I mean, the Truman Show was a was a uh, another moment where you know I had to kind of deal with, uh, well, you're not allowed to do that. You know, you've presented yourself one way, yeah. and uh, you know it's it's a tough thing to convince people that uh, there's something more, mm -hmm. or that uh, they might want to see something different. But I've always believed, all the way along, I've believed that that uh, it was about a spark. Right. It was about uh, who you are as a person. It's about your soul. Yeah. It's about not necessarily. I mean, you do what you do so well. But there is something about you that uh, that uh, is attractive to people in a way that uh, they, they want to sit and uh, watch you for an hour and, and, and listen to you and, and listen to your insights. But there, it's about you mm -hmm. and who you are. What is it worth? What is it worth? And that's, that's what I've come to so many times in my career, in my life, is that I've, I've said, the safe road is, is, is going to pay off. There are, there are many payoffs to it, but I can't be there and uh, and uh, and have my soul be on a completely different uh, track. I, I just, it's always worth losing yeah, to me. It is. It's always worth risking. And if 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 uh, if if this other side of me is not a popular one in the in the scheme of things as far as uh, movie tickets go, then you know what? I'll, I'll I'll find a way to sneak it in there. I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll make a plan. I, w I will I will show myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I will find a way, and even if, even if I'm not as popular, I, I will live in that area. I will, I will expand myself. I mean, I have, I started out with many, many desires as far as, uh, as far as this business goes, and uh, I've so surpassed all of them <laughs> that, I, that, I, that it, uh, it, it's not as meaningful to me anymore. I really love the work itself. I've, I've examined myself on several occasions. Why am I really doing this? Am I doing this because I want to be famous? And I think there was an element to that when I started out. Sure. I wanted to be a rainmaker. Yeah. We should talk about that a little <laughs> further. Cause it, well, what uh, does that mean? That means uh, <clears throat> I think I wasn't necessarily seen as much or as uh, intently as I wanted to be when I was a kid. I had, I had a job, uh, at least in my own mind, and that was to make my mother feel better. She yeah. was uh, kind of uh, uh, very ill in many ways, and uh, so it was to make her feel better. And I think ultimately, I imitated my father. He was a very funny guy. But also, I, I felt some need, and maybe, it, I don't know whether they created it or I created it, but I felt a need to uh, make them feel that their life was worthwhile that they did something special just by the very fact that they brought me into the world. Yeah. So from a very young age, I wanted to convince them that I was a miracle. And then I wanted to convince the world that I was a miracle. <laughs> and, uh, and now I want to convince the world that I'm just like them. So you went from convincing first you're a miracle and then that you are just like them. Yes. And how does that play out today in terms of convincing the world you are just like them, that you are? Well, what I'm finding is, is an interesting thing because I have a lot of people asking me, well, are you, are you afraid that people won't accept you? And I know that in my life, and at least in my, you know, the circle of people I know and know my uh, friends that know my work, it seems like, and even people I talk to, like you, uh, it seems like people are almost waiting for it. That they've suspected that there's another uh, yeah. level to me, and they're and they're kind of uh, intrigued and interested in what that might be. It's it's it's, it's that, and it's an addiction. Obviously, I mean, I'd love an addiction to, to just an knowing yourself. Yeah, an addiction to trying to figure out, what, uh, and maybe this is an impossible uh, task. Uh, but you know, everybody's looking for bliss, you yeah. know, in some way or another. And I, I think I've, you know, I've come to the realization lately that uh, that that bliss comes in waves, and there, and everybody gets a certain amount of it. Yeah, but but, <laughs> but in, in between, it, it, it's just it is, hard work yeah. being in this body. You know? And that it is the unwise person to expect bliss will be there all the time. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. But you look for it. You look for it, and you wonder why you're off the beam all the time, or mm. whatever. So I'm constantly examining myself. I probably do it too much. I've always overthought everything. I mean, you're reading Emerson, and you read. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, right. Intuition. Which is like the big, the big, the big thing for me, you know, yeah. in life right now is the uh, the uh, excerpt from uh, uh, compensation, the essay he did on compensation, where it talks about that man would uh, recognize, uh, would uh, see the mermaid's head, but not the dragon's tail. Yeah. And these are this is something that happens over and over and over in my life, in relationships, and in in, uh, in choices that I make professionally. You know, a lot of times you just don't want to believe in the bad. But the bad is there. 
you know, the negativity is there or the, the, the obvious drawback to the situation is there, but you just go, I want. Yeah. And, and that's, that comes down to thy will be done and everything biblical. It's, you know, it's, uh, so I, I'm always struggling with these concepts. It's to, my desire is my only problem in this world. Your desire? Yes. To, to do your appetite? My appetite, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To prove everything and to be everything. But you are. It's our intention. Our intention is everything. Nothing happens on this planet without it. Not one single thing has ever been accomplished without intention. So I started thinking about my life and I started thinking about this conference and what we're about. And and I looked back and I thought, well, I was two people my whole life. I was in the living room entertaining people, being a monkey, you know, doing my thing for the company and, and trying to relieve my mother who was suffering. She had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and phlebitis and everything, everything under the sun that was nagging at her. And she was depressed. And I wanted her to be free. And I wanted her to realize that her life was worth something because she gave birth to someone who was worth something. And then I would go into my room and I would sit with a legal pad. (laughs) I was a little kid. And I would sit there and I would try to figure out what it meant, what it was all about. Why are we here? What is this? And one day I read something from Buddha that said that all spirituality is about relieving suffering. And I suddenly realized that's what I'm doing in the other room. (laughs) <laughs> and, and I'm aligned, you know, this, my purpose is aligned with this. So I felt incredibly lucky. I lose sight of that all the time. I get caught up in different concerns, ego concerns. But I'm so lucky to be a part of this community and to, to, to do something that is of value. And I, I really cherish that. We are all one thing. It really is true. Can I speak to the, the, the person in the last row, in the very last seat against the wall? Is there, is there someone back there that can say hello? What's your name? Andrea, are, are you aware that, do you have the distinct palpable feeling that your intention created this evening, as well as Melissa's? Do you understand that, that all of this this entire event is happening inside you? (laughs) We'll just try to feel it for a second, because it's a trip, man. Some people go to the Super Bowl. I am the Super Bowl, man. I swear. My friends are all going, did you see that play? That was great. I'm like... Yeah, but the energy coming out of me right now, man, is unbelievable. I'm just sitting there. I'm the stadium. I'm the vendors outside. I'm the crack dealer on the corner. I'm everything, man. There's no end to it, and it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So I hope you can feel that, and I hope you understand that you are one of the creators of this evening that your intentions and your desires created this evening as well. And then I hope you are able to ask yourself, why did I get such a crappy seat? And be okay with it. I mean, you're in the last row, in the last seat. And yet you created this. That's got to be... It's a really selfless thing to do. So understand, based on some things that I read about you, you know, that in the end, it's really a lot about self-respect. Yes, yeah. It is kind of because you know yourself. Yeah. And it is... Well, yeah, and self-respect is certainly one of the major problems in the world. Self-esteem is, is the reason for most ills. And, uh, you know, desiring what we don't have, I mean, is me or I am Peter Appleton. Sure. Yeah. 
that. How did you mean that? Well, in, in the respect that he has this yearning, this yearning that, uh, that is more important to him, uh, again, false gods. Right. Uh, when you put uh, something so in the forefront of your life, some desire in the forefront of your life, that everything else starts to suffer. Uh, uh, I, I understand that. I understand that because I've gone that way and then had to pull myself back, or whatever. But it's the yearning that 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 is can be something very positive. It can create wonderful things. But when it uh, when it makes you uh, negate your life and the people in your life, it, it becomes uh, or you know again like uh, when it makes you uh, bear false witness, you know and. Uh, sell somebody out it's it's just not worth having you know that that yearning is the tough part the yearning to to kind of have that but not make it completely uh, consume you and, and that would be the selling out of his friends, selling out who, of his friends who, who, yeah. who were not guilty of anything and he's who living didn't in even a, know he's living in a place of uh, fear of loss right you know and that that's always a dangerous character the guy who's afraid of loss is a, is a dangerous guy yeah. because he's the guy in hollywood that stabs you in the back or you know, turns on somebody or whatever, they, you know, trying to protect if this you know, dream. If you know a man's fear, then you can conquer him, some say. Uh, truly. I mean, uh, that's what the Blacklist era was about. Some, yeah. Somebody, you know, uh, McCarthy, uh, sat back and said, my gosh, what a, what a wonderful fear to take advantage of yeah. and, uh, and to bring myself to power through it. You know? You know what? I believe in the universe. I believe in the Horn of Plenty. I believe in, in the cornucopia, you know, so I'm not afraid of Tom Cruise and what his movies do. And uh, I can enjoy it. And I can enjoy uh, Russell Crowe. And because there is so much in the universe, we all, you know, can feed from it. And we all, we all uh, you know, there's it, enough for everybody. Is that where you are in your head at this yes, Christmas absolutely. season? They've got a Russell Crowe as a movie out, Tom yes. Cruise has a movie out. You're yes. saying there's enough. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what Absolutely. Jim has I've earned. I've been given so much. I mean, I, I, I would be a, a green boar at the trough of life, you know, if, <laughs> I, if, I, if I questioned If you it. wanted it all. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, I, I sit down with, uh, with friends of mine who are in the, prof in the acting profession, and, and they say, you know, these are really good actors, and they say, man, no one's really getting the chance to do what you're getting to do. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is a... It's quite an arc that's sure going is. on here. To have and your and chance at that a time so, and time again. I feel so lucky to have that. But you had to bring something, otherwise they would not continue to give you the chance, and you obviously recognize that. You have to allow yourself to be seen. That's yeah. the risk. The risk is, especially for somebody who's comedic, yeah, who has that, that uh, weapon at his uh, yeah. disposal. Uh, Just to go to off risk, into a rift. Yeah, yeah, to, to risk being seen is the toughest thing in the world. We're all very shy people, you know, people who do comedy, we're shy. And the, the emotion is right there on the surface. If you pricked me with a pin, I would fly around the room, <laughs> you know? So uh, that's the risk, is that you are showing them yourself, your, your true, authentic self, and the chances of being rejected uh, are, are much more uh, important, you know, much more uh, uh, terrifying. <laughs> My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. That piece that we're after lies somewhere beyond personality. As far as I can tell, it's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it comes to pass. And when I say life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, I really don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. You'll come up with your own style. That's part of the fun. Like many of you, 
I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself until someone smarter than myself made me realize that there is nothing bigger than myself. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. And after you walk through those doors today, you will only ever have two choices, love or fear. Choose love and don't ever let fear turn you against your playful heart. spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. I'm saying, I'm the proof can ask the universe for it. Please. I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Yeah, I would visualize, uh, yeah, I would visualize- This is visualize, when you were broke and poor. Right, having directors interested in me and people that I respected uh, um, saying, you know, I like your work or mm -hmm. whatever that is. and. And uh, I would visualize things coming to me that I w wanted or whatever. This and was in uh, like 1987, 85? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I had nothing at that time. So it was like, it, but it just made me feel better. It made me, at that time, all it really was for me was kind of making me feel better. I would drive home and think, well, I do have these things. And they're out there. I just don't have a hold of them yet, but they're out there. I wrote myself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and I gave myself uh, five years, or three years, maybe. And, uh, and uh, I dated it Thanksgiving 1995. And I put it in my wallet, and I kept it there, and it deteriorated and deteriorated and stuff. And, uh, and uh, but then just before Thanksgiving 1995, I found out that I was gonna make $10 million on, I think it was, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, it's all a risk, but yeah, no, going on stage would be wonderful. I, I, I used to, you know, I did 15 oh, yeah. years sure. in the comedy clubs before right. I, you oh, know, I know, really I know. started acting. Well, one on one, in stand up, which is a PhD of some kind. <laughs> well, it's a PhD of being able to relate to an audience for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's handling what... drunks. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. It's like, God, you better own it. You know, whatever it is, you better own it. I know. I you know, know, I know. have this need you know, for stuff. I'm always like afraid almost that, uh, you know, I, I like say prayers, you know, make sure, you know, that I still have something to do here because well, you know, I, I really believe in the, the idea that if you don't have something to do here, you go. Well, what's you interesting, know? you said something about your parents that just fascinated me. At a certain point, they were just waiting for the end. Yeah, yeah, and uh, absolutely lovely people. Right but kind of lost heart, you know. My father lost his job, and yeah. that hurt him a Attrition lot. Attrition of life had taken its toll. Yes, absolutely, and I think at a certain point they weren't enjoying it anymore. They weren't, they were just kind of waiting around. Uh, and I saw that early on, and I said, no, I can't, I can't have that. I have to break that cycle, yeah. you know. So I'm, I'm fascinated with that myself, and I'm, and I'm wary of it myself, uh, about my motivations, about uh, my, uh, allegiances, uh, about uh, uh, what I'm expressing in the world, uh, you know, just my day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, contact with people. The idea that, you know, if people come up to me and say, I love you, uh, you know, I, I, I try extra hard to give them energy, you know, to make it something that isn't about me. It's about them and this moment, or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm constantly, you know, trying to figure out where I'm at and whether I'm, whether I'm uh, corrupting myself or or not or uh, I I'm probably just you know really too much about this but it, it weighs heavy on me a lot mm -hmm. I believe in uh, manifestation I believe in uh, you know putting a rocket of desire out into the universe and and you get it when you believe it you get it when you believe you have it and that's the key is like people still they sit around going when's it going to come 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 
and that's the wrong way. You're, you're facing the wrong way, you're facing away from it. You have to go, it's here, it's here, it's here. I used to open my arms, I used to sit up there, you know, and open my arms and imagine a giant funnel of, uh, of gifts coming would come right from the you. universe. Yes. Honest to God, I, you could, you know, cut to me there, I'm like, <laughs> like this. And, uh, and if nothing else, it made me feel more positive about where I was. I, I drove down from Mulholland Drive every, every night, you know, that I went up there, feeling that I was one of the biggest actors in Hollywood. I was doing wonderful work that made people happy. Uh, I was, you know, I owned all that. That was it. You know, I guess, you know, what I own, when you think about it, is, is my faith. That's what I own. That's about it. Because I, I started thinking materially <laughs> and, and all those your things. Your faith in, in yourself. Life. Or your Absolutely. faith in some faith in the universe, faith in myself. Yeah, that's, that is in the end what you own. That's in the it. sense of that's all uh, I have. That you could, that's exactly right. You can strip all the stuff away, and right. and if you have that, that sense of they that's can't, huge. And it, that's as big as it gets. That's what they <laughs> huge. Can, you know, for the I, most I've part, I've seen that, mountains move in my life. So yeah. uh, I'm, and I've, I've I've had just endless gifts, and they've all been things that I have at some point sat and and made myself believe were possible. And you did with the check four years earlier. You did what yes. with it. Right. I, I wrote myself a check when I was up on a Mulholland Drive. Right. I wrote myself a, a post-dated check, Thanksgiving 1995, <laughs> for the sum of $10 million. And again, it wasn't about the money. It was about where you are if you're right. receiving that kind right. of money right. <clears throat> and what you're doing. Because I've examined that all the way along, you know, when all this $20 million man business right, right, right. was happening. Uh, you know, uh, I've examined what my motivations are. And the fact is I'm addicted to expressing myself. In, in certain ways, and, and I have to do it, and I would do it if I was making 20 cents. Yeah. So uh, it's really about that, especially now. I, I have enough money to live 20 lives, so I, I, uh, I, I can't stop. I'm fascinated by what creates characters, you know, what, what, what defines people, what, what creates them, what puts them together. Everybody's Frankenstein, and they just like, as, as life goes on, you either you either lose pieces of yourself, gain other pieces, and, and it just that's the fascinating thing about acting. It's like somebody like Andy Kaufman, what is it? And I stood by his gravesite, you know, with his sister, and, and, uh, and uh, she said one thing to me that cleared it all up, and that was that uh, Andy was never part of the club, so he created his own club that no one else could be a part of. Because I was fully, uh, you know, prepared to just play out, uh, you know, stand-up comedy and comedy clubs. And yeah, but there's something within you that constantly pushed the edges of the envelope wherever you were. Well, or at least took advantage of the opportunities that came around. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, just the courage to jump in. I mean, you know, to do films that are out of your so-called power alley, as they yeah. call it, uh, is it takes nerve, <laughs> you know, yeah. so uh, I have the nerve. You know, and we'll see if I have the goods, but I have the nerve. Uh, and uh, it, uh, I, I'm just excited, really, about always changing, about crossing back and forth across the river and throwing the hounds off the trail. I, I love that. Just when, I we, love think, that just when people, we think we've got you, we know you, right, you're off on another yeah, route. Absolutely. And if I feel like I've been figured out, boy, look out. I will become something completely different, you know. Maybe I might, might not want to become something completely different, but express something completely different. I always felt like if the world is going crazy, I'll be calm. And if, uh, and if they're calm, I'll be the one hanging off the chandelier. <laughs>